for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adoption the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to move item 8A proclamation for Sergeant Tim Dowdy to item 6A and move current 6A to 6B. I'll second that. So a motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Three public hearing for ordinance amended chapter 23 of the code of the town of East Hampton regarding the Economic Development Commission to include purpose and mission statement. Good evening. Um, I know you have a full schedule tonight, so I'll keep my remarks. Thanks, thanks for oh, being. sorry. Uh, Matt Reich, um, 9 Arch Drive, um, and I also serve as chairman of the East Hampton Economic Development Commission. So just keeping my remarks brief is um, that I was here a couple months ago, I believe in October, to make a presentation regarding the mission statement that I, along with uh, my fellow commission members, Jace and Robin, have put together um, in addition, I do want to recognize uh, former town council member Dean Markham, who brought to our attention the fact that we uh, did not really have a mission statement as a commission. So I do want to give a credit to him for bringing that to our attention. And I think you'll find that in the mission statement that we had put together, as I mentioned two months ago, it is really a, a collaborative process of to provide future commission members um, some guidance if they are looking for ideas of what uh, the EDC can do to help the business community in town as well as our local residents at the same time serve as a roadmap for potentially items that have come up, whether they be from within our commission, items that we've been heard suggested to us by businesses in town or other uh, community stakeholders. I urge adoption, as I, as I mentioned, it's been a real collaborative process and I really commend the work of, again, my commission members, uh, Jace and Robin, who has um, unfortunately, since uh, left our commission, as she was taking, as she's seen great success in professional work um, and taking up more of her time. And I thank you for the opportunity to have this considered. And again, I urge adoption. All right, thank you. Uh, just one point of order, Richard Fox. No, I'm sure you've met, not, not you. Just point it out. Um, I can look it up real quick. I'm, I would uh, trust my draft of the town code uh, ordinance rather than the agenda. The publications were correct. I know that. Um, Okay, well, you're looking that up. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here from the public who would I'd like to please comment on this issue? I'll leave the public hearing open for a few minutes and Mr. Cox clears this up. So it's confirmed that the uh, uh, Economic Development Commission is addressed in Chapter 33. 33. So the ordinance is correct. The publications were correct. It was just a mistake on the agenda. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Any comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Item four, approval of the minutes the November 23rd meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written for the radio meeting, November 23rd, 2020. Okay, second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion. Item five, public remarks. We have to raise your hand here. Those who might be watching us online, anyone who has anything to say, please step forward to the mic, state your name and address. Go 
Uh, hello, my name is Pam Hatfield, and I'm at uh, 37 Strong Life. Um, I wanted to thank the town council and the town manager for your consideration with the firm lane acceptance request. I would like the town council to understand this request stems from ongoing pothole and road maintenance requests and the need for permanent solution. Our earlier request to resolve the firm lane situation have been handled temporarily by filling potholes, patching, and promises to take action for a permanent resolution. To date, I am not aware of any action taken to remedy the situation. In my opinion, the residents really just want the assurance to know the town will maintain the road and when calling the town garage to request pothole repair and patching, action will be taken. Other private roads have been accepted without having to upgrade to the levels suggested by the town manager. It seems unfair to hold Fernlane residents to a different standard. Since Fernlane is located in the historic district, the recommendation appears to go above and beyond what is needed and lacks consistency in keeping with the historic district and nature of other roads in the community. Please note, traffic on Fern Lane is minimal. The majority of Fern Lane residents are senior citizens, longtime residents, and have paid taxes for many years. To place a hardship such as recommended in the town manager's memo seems unreasonable to me. Perhaps funds from the new infrastructure bill can be utilized. Certainly, a more cost-effective and amicable solution can be reached. I wanted to share a little background on Fern Lane. Fern Lane is located in the Middle Haddam Historic District. The first house on Fern Lane dates back to 1939 and belonged to the Jewetts. In my research, I found a recorded request to take over the road dating back to the early 1950s, volume 73, page 417, describing a specific parcel of, a, of the laneway known as Fern Lane that were packaged and awaiting acceptance. I believe this parcel is still intact. Further firm lane development continued in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, culminating in the early 80s as the town approved subdivision projects, Edgemere Estates and Quail Hill, adding to road issues. The Quail Hill project expanded firm lane by adding a right of way, separate parcel to the lower end of firm lane. Several residents attended the town council meeting. Is it okay? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Several residents attended the town council meeting July 2014 to request once again acceptance and final resolution. A lengthy private road discussion ensued, resulting in a unanimous decision to fill potholes immediately, create an action plan for permanent resolution, and address um, Byron. Poe and other private roads. Guidance at that time was simply at the town council's approval to accept the road. I believe Byron and Poe were accepted sometime after this meeting without upgrades. When I moved here in 1994, Fern Lane was paved. Since that time, Fern Lane has seen two complete pavings, numerous pothole fillings, road patchings, all completed by the town. It is my understanding paving the road by the town constitutes acceptance at a, a town road. One of the full paving events was highlighted in the local newspaper and included a photo. If this issue can be resolved, it will drastically improve the health, safety, and welfare of Fern Lane residents. Please consider accepting Fern Lane as an official road to permanently resolve this situation and provide assurance that the road will be maintained going forward without imposing the burden of upgrading the road to standards the residents believe to be unwarranted and unprecedented. Thank you for your consideration. Respectfully, Pam Hatfield. Thank you.
Hey, good evening. Mike Piergolini, 16 Fern Lane, uh, Middle Haddam. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Pam for the work she's done on this. Uh, this is my second attempt to have this discussion regarding Fern Lane. Uh, on or about July of 2014, I was here with you folks, um, made several discussion points. Uh, so here we are, several years later, still discussing Fern Lane. Um, just to add on to what Pam said, I'd like to point out that by the town's own uh, ordinances, in the establishment of the historic district and by the town's own definitions of town road, I have them here, uh, the town has in fact already accepted Fern Lane, uh, but you know, de facto in its own definitions. Again, the, the the Board of Selectmen in 77, revised in 2010, established an historic district, which includes Fern Lane. And we've all seen this document before. If you go to the town's definitions of town road, there are three points uh, to decide a town road. The first is listed in the Department of Transportation list for the state of Connecticut. It's not in there. We all agree on that. The town road can be and any historic road which the town council determines is a town road or a road accepted as a town road by the town council action. Town council action is the establishment of the historic district, which includes Fern Lane. Uh, the combination of those two definitions would argue that strongly that the town has already accepted Fern Lane and ought to maintain it. Uh, lastly, wait, here's our mail -a map The town recognizes Fern Lane and includes Fern Lane in and Byron as town roads. So this is just another piece of evidence that Fern Lane is recognized within the town. Uh, those are the two, those are the additional pieces that I have to add to Pam's work. Um, again, it's my opinion. And I'd ask that I, when, I, when I visited it last time, I asked the, the council to, to make a vote on it. Uh, that was deferred by the prior town manager, uh, who's <laughs> no longer part of this discussion. Uh, but I believe that Burn Lane is part of the town road by definition. And we could clear this up by just answering that question right here and right now. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> William Demore, three fern lane. Uh, to not repeat, but to add on to the history. Uh, those of you that know the area down there, High Point uh, development that went in uh, just down from uh, Fern Lane. Uh, the thought was suggested by the town to connect to Fern Lane at that time. Uh, unfortunately, the recommendation uh, by the town, which neither was supported by the developer who didn't want it in any case, uh, or by the Fern Lane residents was that it be a one-way uh, connection to Fern Lane. And so the thought process has been there before. They've, known, they've recognized the problem before and the need for a uh, solution. Also, I would take it that the town has uh, recognized the road or some responsibility for the road before, not only in the actions taken to maintain and improve it, but in the actions with uh, the Cobalt Lodge convalescent home. Uh, there is now a gated access to Fern Lane uh, that was granted by the town. Uh, Cobalt Lodge's use or abuse of that uh, gate is a discussion matter for a different 
uh, day. Uh, but in this case, the, the town did take the action on its own, not with the permission of the Fern Lane residents to increase their uh, rights to uh, Fern Lane. Uh, excuse me for looking at my notes. But the last point I'd like to make is that uh, this has come up in PNC and here multiple times before. Each time, uh, both whether it be PNC or town council has been supportive in terms of reminding uh, the town crew to get out there, patch the road, do whatever, and we appreciate that. But we are really looking for a more permanent solution, even if that at least maintains regular maintenance of the road. So I thank you for that. Sylvia DeBoer, Free Fern Lane. I would just add that um, things were maintained until the prior town manager uh, was hired and it seemed to have been a budgetary decision to stop maintaining the road. And it was also at that time that a private way sign was put up for the first time. So this was a change that just uh, seems to have occurred in the last 10 or 15 years when he was hired. This town mayor is mayor for three years. When did that sign go up? More than three years ago. Yeah. When all the new signage went up around town with all those pre blue signs. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Kathy, do we have anyone online? Someone online with their hand raised. If I may, just to just so the, the record reflects in, under public comment uh, on the desk tonight, the council saw an email that was sent to us by <clears throat> Michelle Levy uh, or Levy, um, indicating uh, her feelings on the on the situation and and in general, I will paraphrase those as being uh the, the proposed cost that the town is talking about is is too significant for most of the residents to bear uh, that memo is uh, or that email rather was put on the council's desk tonight for your information thank you Dave. Yeah. Okay, other comments i'll close this portion of the meeting thank you and 6a Proclamation of Sergeant Gowden, Tim Gowden. Please step forward. Gowden, I'd like to personally thank you for all your years of service to the town of East Hampton. This document, proclamation. We are missing a senior because Eric's not here. I'm, I'm sure he would love to sign for you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. I do have to tell a Tim Dowdy story. I don't know if you remember <laughs> this. <laughs> Probably 15, maybe 20 years ago, I happened to be a planning and zoning meeting. I was chairing it. It was an incredibly hot meeting. In fact, Mr. Carey at the time got word that there were death threats against some of the PNZ members. So he suggested we have an officer. Officer Dowdy was the one who showed up. So sure enough, we have this one individual who would not sit down, he would not shut up. And the crowd started going. There was probably 150, maybe 200 people. I said, it was packed. I banged the gavel three times. On the third gavel, I said, Officer Dowdy, and very calmly, very respectfully stepped forward. Mr. Chairman, do you deem this man unruly? The guy sat down, the room got dead silent. I looked at him, I said, if you stand up one more time, this officer will escort you out of the building. Meeting went smooth the rest of the night. Tim, I never forgot that. Thank you for it. Thank you. Okay, to 6A presentations, 6B rather, I'm sorry, Clean Energy Task Force presentation on sustainable CT.
Do I have any control of the slides? Or? You no, don't you by saying it. advance or like we did in grade Perfect. school, right? You know, Perfect. next slide, please. Hey, um, my name is Paul Zuski, appointed by Fernwood. This is Russ Kaplan. Um, we are members of the Clean Energy Task Force here in town. Uh, back in January, the Clean Energy Task Force passed a motion to ask the town council to pass a resolution to participate in sustainable CT. None of us knew how the process worked, so we sat on it for all these months. And now, finally, we are presenting it to you guys. Hopefully, uh, to get the ball rolling. Uh, so, here, right, what is sustainable CT? Mission driven, <coughs> rigorous certification program understands economic, environmental, and human well being are linked. It's free, voluntary, grassroots, and municipal for town by town effort. Uh, developed by the Institute for Sustainable CT. The Sustainable Energy ACSU, in partnership with the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities, and it rewards Connecticut towns for completing sustainability actions across town systems. For example, the local economy, land and natural resources, arts and culture, planning, transportation, infrastructure, public services, and housing. Thanks. Back to figures, it was established in 2017. There's two levels of certification in the program, bronze and silver, um, level determined in part by points earned for actions accomplished. As of December 2021, over half municipalities in Connecticut were registered, 126, and 69 have earned bronze or silver. Um, as far as local municipalities, Portland and Glastonbury are both silver, Hebert is bronze, Marlboro, Colchester, Haddam, East Haven are all registered in the program. Next. Why go for certification? The process that helps identify sustainability gaps and opportunities provides a rallying point and community-wide opportunity to share in collective vision, offers access to matching funds for projects. Um, that's the grant um, community match funds um, that the program offers. Recognizes showcases are recognizes and showcases our accomplishments and commitment to sustainability, promotes civic pride, and serves as a tool to attract new business, smart development, skilled workforce, and new families. What does action look like? This, there's over 200 possibilities of ways to qualify to earn points towards the, um, the goals, the certifications, uh, purchasing sustainable goods and services, watershed protection programs, arts and culture initiatives, inventory and assessment of historic resources, pro-sustainability permitting process, agricultural friendly practices, energy use reduction across municipal buildings, healthy and sustainable food networks, and housing needs assessment. Who is on the team? In the town, you have the town council, the town manager will be involved, and town departments. The residents will have officials and volunteers, the various committees in the towns, and then sustainable CT themselves are the key staff are available for one-on-one -on -one through webinars, And a connections and robust suite of digital tools and templates. So they are, they actually presented to, up to us as a clean energy task force. They are available. So, how will we get there? Hopefully, say January 2022, establish a, a sustainability team. That's, that's going to be a town employees, residents, at least three members, one of which must be an elected official or staff member in the town. Um, partner with town departments and commissions while minimizing town uh, time demands. Um, so that would be projects that are happening already. The, the department heads can focus on the projects. Sustainability team will focus on um, submitting the paperwork and, and logistics towards sustainable CT and getting the points and any grants that sustainable CT can provide. Uh, create inventory of accomplishments and establish timelines ongoing and new projects. Establish goals for achieving maximum points. Submit draft applications and support materials to sustainable CT for input and counsel, strengthen and complete application, and hopefully in 2023, we can hopefully become, um, submit an application to go for the bronze. How can a town council help? Provide input, guidance, and approvals for viable actions. Help promote and communicate East Hampton's participation in programs across municipal, professional, and person personal networks. Assist with key introductions, Volunteer to join an action team, recruiting for energy, environment, and affordable housing. Uh, participate, support participation in possible training seminars, webinars, examples of watershed, 
preservation, sustainable purchasing, energy solutions, uh, recommend possible candidates to serve as project interns, ask lots of questions, be a source for solutions, and pass the resolution to begin the process. So imagine a sustainable, thriving, vibrant, inclusive, inviting, innovative, celebrated, and recognized East Hampton. So I stand with CT, adopt the resolution to get started. And then last slide is a quote from uh, Margaret Wheatley. There's no power for change greater than a community discover discovering what it cares about. Well, that's the presentation. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. What is the value of this program? I, I tell you, I read this sheet and I couldn't figure out the value, the, the value. I figured it was just a cliche, one after another. Um, why do we need more oversight when we have these uh, planning boards and commissions? do the same work. Um, why do we need another board or another group to deem us sustainable? Which obviously are if they've been around for a while. Um, again, the action looks like we have much of this already being done in established committees, commissions. So let, let me paraphrase this to Could you give us an example of where the town would benefit by being involved, other than we get a bronze star or a silver star for Saturday? What project or something that would come to mind that could be done that would be a savings to the town? Let's so, well, for example, um, if you ever want improvements on airlines, really, you could go for a matching grant through Sustainable CT. Um, and there's numerous examples of matching grant. Unfortunately, I don't have any right in front of me, but there are new, numerous examples online on the website of matching grants that they so the town raises so much either whether they raise it or the town funds it um, you can apply to sustainable ct they will match that grant um, match the amount that you've given up to a certain amount um and like like um uh, mrs Walk, Ms. Walk said many things are already being done in town and these can be used can be put in retroactively is it just this I want to say it's an oversight, over an oversight committee. It's more of a, a committee that's just taking what town departments are already doing and just submitting it this way, finding grants, finding ways to, to save the town money through whether it's through grants, through energy savings. Uh, you know, it's just it's so if I understand you correctly, by being part of this gives you access to grants that you might not have if you weren't part of it. Is that Mm -hmm. Correct in saying that. that that's correct. Yep. Okay. It opens up opportunities for certain grants through a sustainable CT. Okay. All right. And and uh, last thing I'll say to that is the you can retroactively uh, use some of these uh, um, things that we're doing. For example, electric car show that we had uh, over the summer that would go towards stuff like this. And the more points you get, the more good standing you are with them um, for grants and whatnot. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. It's a contract. We're doing it. Possible phase one of the water system evaluation design. David, what else did you Sure. Uh, so, as the town council will recall, uh, late last year, uh, we, sent, we put out uh, to the community or to the development or the engineering community uh, a request for qualifications. Uh, we received a number of responses, a committee, uh, including members of the town council, uh, vetted those uh, engineering firms and recommended to the council that we engage with environmental partners. Environmental partners was engaged and asked to, uh, using the data that we have uh, about water systems in East Hampton, uh, to evaluate that information and develop with us based on the conversations we would had uh, really the first step of, of moving us toward a, a water system. Uh, so what you have in front of you is phase one of, I don't know how many phases of work 
uh, with environmental partners to take the town from today uh, through an evaluation of its options for what is being focused on initially, uh, through an engineering report that identifies the plan we plan to take uh, and how much that costs, which is the first step towards external funding for that work. Um, the Water Subcommittee of the Council has very clearly focused on, as part of its first phase, a new uh, and expanded water source for the Village Center uh, as the top priority, which would then allow the Village Center to uh, not only uh, improve the quality and quantity of water it has, but serve as the jumping off point, if you will, uh, to serve uh, priority neighborhoods around the Village Center uh, and move out from there to other areas of town. So the first step, as I said, is to evaluate the options for that as a community come to a decision on the path that we would want to take uh, and identify the costs for that, uh, updated information for that and prepare the engineering report. The last step in phase one would be if we're gonna go ahead to design uh, uh, essentially that project, whatever that project would be. So. Um, you have in front of you a proposal from environmental partners for phase one uh, in the not to exceed amount of $47,600. Any other questions? Entertain a motion. I have one question. Whatever happened to the engineering reports from years past when water systems had been discussed? It goes from years past, I'm sure it didn't make anything. This, this, what we're doing now, I guess you just asked the conversation, is we're trying to come up with a plan that actually has some dollar signs for you to assign to it. And that's where it's very from for. Sure. And if I could add to your comments, if I may, uh, all those reports, and you are absolutely correct, we have mountains of reporting on water, as you're well aware. Uh, Environmental Partners has reviewed much of that. So they uh, are benefiting from that information. We continue to benefit as a town from that information. It gives them uh, a great head start on getting us to a point where we can update uh, our direction and we can update the costs, which of course are significantly different than they were all the times that we talked about water in the past, let's just say. So that's really where we are at this point. They intend to go back to that information, facilitate with us uh, the public conversation about the direction uh, and the final decision on what's our what's the project going to be, uh, estimate those costs, finish the preliminary engineering report, which is that funding piece that we need to get done, uh, and then start with us on what I'll refer to as phase two, designing that first project and getting it ready to roll. Any other okay. questions or comments? Once again, entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to accept the approval of the scope and costs for phase one of the water systems evaluation and design project with environmental partners and not to exceed the amount of $47,600. Second. A motion and second. Any discussion? If I may just remind you, in terms of funding source for this, I know that's going to be important for many folks in town. Uh, the community received uh, about a year ago uh, a $250,000 grant directly from the state of Connecticut being administered by the Department of Public Health uh, for the purposes of East Hampton and designing water system improvements and expansion. So that is the funding source for these for this work. Thank you for that. No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 8A, review and possible approval of the ordinance amending Chapter 23 of the Code of County Stamp regarding Economic Development Commission to include a purpose and mission statement. As we've heard this several times before us. Um, is there any discussion on this? Hearing none, we have a motion to approve it. So moved. I'm sorry if I said chapter three, we have 23, I meant 30. <laughs> yes, as we established, 33 is the correct number. Is 
So the motion. We have a second of that. Second. Second. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thanks. Good night. Subcommittee reports. I don't believe we have any. Yes, sir. I could uh, give an update on the fields committee. I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the fields committee did meet a week ago. The fields committee is overseeing all of the infrastructure changes and improvements to the back of the high school. It'll include uh, replacing the tennis court, the track, improvements to the baseball field and the soccer field. We're very pleased to announce the sod uh, project was completed in two and a half days on the baseball field. The irrigation <coughs> project, part of the total project is complete. They will be installing a new drain sometime in the spring once the, uh, the operation begins again after the winter months. They have, I believe, cleaned up the site in preparation for the winter months. And in the spring, the hope is to hopefully the latter part of April, they'll be able to resurface the new track. They'll be able to resurface the tennis courts. And to be perfectly frank, uh, the project has moved along extremely smoothly. It is right on project, right on target. And we're looking for a completion, uh, hopefully by the first part of June. Okay, so from what you're saying, right? understand you correctly the project shutting down after this point until yes they, they could very well have shut down as of last friday okay. uh, the discussion was to complete as much as they could yes. uh it, it's limited to what they can do the other item that will be completed in the spring uh the irrigation system is going to be expanded and has been expanded and they're going to include putting in an additional water tank to allow the uh, the wells that we have to replenish in time and to provide a suitable water to uh, care for the uh, fields. And that will most likely happen uh, early to mid spring. Very good, thank you. Any other subcommittee reports? Um, Mr. Brown? Um, so what we just heard is, um, and we just passed, um, um, it's a $47,600. Um, that's exactly what we ask environmental protection to do. This is a step that we have to take. It's not a privileged step. In order to apply for grants down the road, we have to take this initial step. Um, that's number one. Under, uh, I can't emphasize and for the general public enough about water, water, water. Uh, East Hampton is gonna be facing a very big hurdle. I get it, most of the town people will get it. But in order to, I think, put East Hampton in the best light for future growth, is we've got to do something about water. There's many places in town. Uh, we're, we're, back, we're, back up. we're going to start with the village center, try to increase our uh, availability to get um, people to sign on for water. Uh, but there's other areas in town that in need of water. Uh, wells are going dry earlier and earlier in the season. So that's a hurdle we're going to have to face. Um, the other thing I will report on is the American Rescue Plan. As you know, we have some, uh, how much do we have to pay? Uh, the town is slated to get just over $3.7 million. Um, the initial step was to have the department heads under Dave leadership put a wish list together about what that those dollars could be used for. Um, the committee um, at its next meeting will look at those lists and try, try to prioritize them for the council. 
we're not going to cut the list. We'll set priorities and present the whole list to the council. There's one interesting, and I have to bring this up. Uh, they brought this to the committee's attention. East Windsor took some of those ARP dollars and developed their own, what would you call it, um, grant system for in the, um, the town. They carved out a percentage of those RFP dollars and um, business, private uh, businesses uh, plus um, community organizations. Our community organizations uh, could apply for these grants. I think, and I will tell you, I'm one on the committee that I, have, uh, I think that's a good idea to share that money um, with. I, I think, Mr. Brown, you're going down a road that doesn't need to be gone down at this point because we're not discussing the full document in front of this council. When we bring that full document, you may have the privilege of discussing that but not until that time. We're going I down the road the, at this time. And I, stand, we, I am not discussing a, doc, a document. I you're mean, discussing an idea. I am talking about the concept. And I think I have a right as a committee chair, a person to talk about the concept. Well, I am not going into the document and I know you don't want this brought forward, but I think it should be out there. And I think the committee should bring it to the full council. Not disagree with you, but that doesn't have to be done tonight because we can't have a I'm not bringing it for I make it a part of my presentation as part of the subcommittee. Period. All right. Newly noted. Any other subcommittee reports? No, sir. All right, while we're on subcommittees, let me make it quite clear. They are strictly in the chair appointing is that of the chair of this council, is it not? Yes. You kind of got self-appointed by Mr. Cox in that committee. I'm removing you from chair and putting myself as chair of that. That's so I will do the reports on that. That's your approval. That is. Thank you. Let me just exercise that. Make that note, please. Any more reports? Hearing none, go ahead. Yes, I did uh, attend a committee on aging uh, last week, and they are moving ahead with their survey and condensing it, making it digestible so it can be presented to the council. And it's a rather all inclusive survey, and I found it rather fascinating. We have a discussion on surveys on the town manager's report, but thank you. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Thank you. On to new business. Review, review and possible approval of police department general orders. Steve, we have two more for us for tonight. Yep. I will make the chief up. Uh, thank you for uh, the record. Uh, Dennis Weston, the chief of police for the town of East Hampton. Um, tonight before you are two uh, existing general orders uh, which require modification by recent uh, changes by the Police Officer Standard and Training Council, which is uh, a name for the police academy that governs how police departments uh, do business. So the first one is the pursuit policy. Again, it's an existing general order which this council passed, uh, well, part of the members passed in June 22nd, 2021. Uh, the police officer standards and training council made a few minor changes on November 18th, which uh, necessitated the change. The changes add exceptions to situations in which tire deflation devices may be deployed, which are a commonly referred to name as uh, stop sticks. The second one is a general order, existing general order for the uh, use of the body worn and dashboard cameras. Uh, it, this one was also approved by town council September 14th of 2021 and post council made a few minor changes in, in situations in which the body cameras and in-car cameras can be reviewed by police officers prior to release and the time allowed to uh, release the actual recordings to the public. Both of these policies are mandatory policies. 
uh, which have been before the council before. And we're just, uh, I am just asking for approval to update those two minor changes, uh, which are marked in red in both policies. Any questions for the chief? Hearing none, I have a motion to approve the orders. I'd Do like oh. one motion or two. One for each or both together. You can do it under both. Just describe both in your motion. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the general order 3.6 pursuit policy and the general order 5.23 use of body worn and dashboard cameras. A motion of a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank, Thank you very much. New business item B: discussion of a petition received regarding acceptance of private road, private road fern lane into town ownership. Now, Mr. Fox, you do some research on this. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the uh, council received a petition in November from the current residents of uh, Fern Lane requesting that the town accept the uh, accept that road into town ownership. Uh, notwithstanding the comments that were made earlier today, uh, earlier in this meeting, um, it's the understanding of staff uh, that uh, similar requests as they identified have been received, uh, but that uh, the, the council has not uh, to this point accepted the road. Um, the intent of the staff in reviewing this was to provide a path that the council could use uh, if it wanted to accept the road by uh, turning it into a road that would meet an acceptable standard, not the standard that's included in our subdivision code because this road could never meet that and probably shouldn't meet that, but to come to an acceptable standard. I provided some information about the, the road in uh, my memorandum uh, in terms of its length and the number of business or uh, properties rather that uh, 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 do connect to it. I asked the public works director who's an engineer to look at that road and develop a concept for how much it might cost to bring that up to a full-fledged appropriate road in terms of depth uh, and a, an acceptable width and, and some stormwater work and, and those sorts of things. The other thing that is not in place uh, at Fern Road, of course, is a public right of way. Uh, there are some areas that may be uh, right of way, as I think some of the residents alluded to earlier, uh, but most of the access is via um, easements or other types of permission granting uh, for movement across private property. Um, so staff has outlined a process that allows uh, or that provides for uh, the residents to act in, in many regards as the developer of, of the area and the developer of the road and ask them to go through the process of identifying a right of way, uh, identifying an appropriate design for a road, um, and suggesting to the council that the cost of that activity, uh, frankly, at the, at the desire of the council, including not only the construction, but to the extent it wanted to, some of those professional services uh, could be included in an assessment made against the properties over time. Uh, the state law does provide uh, an open-ended almost uh, permission to the town council to develop a process and to levy the special assessment in a manner that it deems appropriate. Uh, I would suggest that it would deem that appropriate after conversation with uh, the community impacted uh, and decide the length of time, any interest rate that might be ascribed uh, to the cost. We would ballpark the, the cost of that road and we would assume that this is the high end uh, of, and the engineering and professional services related to establishing the right of way and designing the road at maybe $550,000, which could be uh, divided or should be divided among those properties and could be repaid over some period of time. Um, I apologize, Mr. Chairman, you did ask me to give you some concepts of cost. Uh, I wasn't able to get that done for you this afternoon, but uh, we can certainly provide that if the council chooses to go on in the discussion into the future. Uh, but uh, 
that time frame to be repaid could be as short or as long as the council decided. And frankly, it could also include an option where a resident could pay that off either in advance if they were in a position to do so or over a shorter period of time if they chose to. Um, so that's just sort of the basics. I think there's also some, some concepts if you moved it ahead of uh, a process that would be gone through to get some variances from the road standard, um, trying to come up with a way that would allow the community to uh, accept a road and have it be in an appropriate, an appropriate road for use by the public. And one that the town would maintain. And I would ask you for the next meeting to have that information available so the council members have an idea of what's going on and what the cost would be. Uh, as well as the question I would ask you to look into the um, com convalescent home accessing firm lane. I'd like to know if they actually had a deed. They might have had a deed easement on their property which allowed them to do it. I can't see the town being able to grant access to a private road unless there was one of those in place. So I would like that cleared up. Mm -hmm. And also the um, the roads, uh, I think it was Poe and Bryant, the conditions in which they were took, taken as uh, back to town roads. I know we took, um, there was some questions on, uh, help me out Mr. Brown, Meeks Point. Is it Meeks Point? Nick, Sorry, Nick, I didn't Nick, Nick, Nick you know, also, is that Meeks? Yeah. There was a question about that being a private road, and I guess documentation came up that it no, it wasn't a private road, it was actually a town road. Um, so I'd like some clarification on what and how it would happen. I know some of those roads, and Bryant and Poe could have been one of them, back when they did the sewer systems, along with some of the other roads, the town went ahead and as part of the sewer project, repaved those roads. They paved right over them, so they kind of considered them town roads at that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, but for the residents of Fern, we're not letting this go, but we have to look at all our options. Um, and we will be reviewing it and see if we can come up with some sort of acceptable agreement. Uh, certainly, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Okay, thank you. We'll look at that. Oh, while well, you're up there, how many of these report? Uh, certainly. Uh, okay. You actually have in front of you one other item before the town manager's report, unless you're trying to tell me something. Uh, we did add to the agenda the opioid uh, settlement. Oh, request. I'm sorry. Look at it. I, yeah, we'll you're probably looking at the other. That's. Uh, I apologize for that. We, as you know, added that uh, to the agenda um, uh, just yesterday for the for the council to take an action. Uh, we've been looking at this for some time. Uh, those of you that are are sort of watching this activity, this uh, case that has been levied by. Uh, many municipalities and states across the country against the manufacturers and distributors, distributors of uh, various opioid related drugs. There is a settlement uh, in process down for that, whereby um, something on the order of, uh, of 40, million, 40 billion with a B uh, dollars would be distributed to states and municipalities directly over time. Uh, to aid them in responding to the opioid uh, epidemic, the opioid uh, overdose and, and addiction epidemic. Uh, in particular, uh, those funds not only could be used to um, cover costs, but also can be used for prevention activities and other methods and other education and other activities uh, to uh, keep people from uh, really uh, becoming uh, a problem uh, as it relates to opioids. So uh, in Connecticut, uh, we have until just after the first of the year to decide whether to opt into the settlement. It's a little bit like a class action, but different in that we have to opt in rather than, than the opposite. Uh, so uh, settlements get paid depending on who you are in terms of getting, or who are you are in terms of making payments. Uh, some of the settle of those being of, of those settling their lawsuits are paying out over nine years. Some of those are paying out over 18 years. The town of East Hampton would likely get about $180,000 over the next 18 years. About 10 grand. We can all do that math a year, a little bit more in the beginning, 
and maybe a little bit less in the, in the later years, um, but that we could use for, uh, as, as we've talked about, opioid uh, prevention and education and those sorts of things. Mr. Cox, how much has the opioid crisis cost these families? You know, I've never done that math, but certainly uh, and sadly, we have had individuals in town that have uh, lost their battle with opioid addiction. I'm talking uh, in terms of dollars. Yeah, and, and we certainly have had expenses in responding to those individuals. Uh, the chief, as you know, as part of his monthly uh, information he provides to the town council identifies Narcan use. Uh, that is certainly an expense we have endured. Uh, in, in assisting to respond to these folks as they struggle. Um, so uh, I don't know a specific dollar amount. I, perhaps we could generate an estimate. That would be fine. Um, we can certainly do that. But, uh, you know, the dollars are not insignificant. Um, and some, I think, are some of those costs, even though they are hard dollars, would likely be hard to estimate. Well, Mr. Cox, did I understand that the time frame is rather tight and that a decision has to be made since this is our only meeting during December yes. prior to the first of the year? Yes, it, it is a little short. I, and I, I, I hope you appreciate that uh, um, that, that is uh, the time frame. I will say that opting in today, if for some reason we felt that we didn't want to stay in, we could pull out. Um, but the reason that there is a lot of pressure for municipalities, and Kathy can attest, we have been bombarded in the office with other municipalities encouraging us to connect and to register for the settlement. Because if all of the municipalities register, um, the state of Connecticut on the whole gets more money. Uh, and the theory behind being able to opt out is that if for some reason we were to opt in and the amount of funds was not significant enough for us or for a given municipality, they could opt out, which presumably preserves their ability to try and get a settlement directly. The town of East Hampton never levied a lawsuit. Uh, we're riding the coattails of those who did. Uh, I see, for example, I, I see rather uh, no reason the town would not uh, register itself and, and avail itself of the funds. Uh, Chairman Phil Hauer and I have talked about, and he has asked me to have the, the folks who work in prevention activities for the town already uh, to develop uh, what we would do if the funds actually do come and when they actually do come, develop what the programming might look like for uh, prevention type programming in the community. So would that motion be to enter into, so we have all the legal? Yeah, I think it's an appropriate uh, to uh, adopt a motion to authorize the town manager to register the community for the opioid settlement agreement. I'll make that motion. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, I'll get that uh, taken care of right away. So as always, uh, the written report is included in the agenda packet. Uh, let me just focus on uh, really three items uh, that were included in that report uh, for uh, the benefit of the community. Uh, interestingly, uh, you alluded to earlier, uh, Chairman Phil Hauer, the uh, surveys that are going on. Uh, the, the Council on Aging, of course, finished its survey uh, and is uh, compiling that for a presentation to the Council just after the first of the year. The uh, Parks and Recreation Department is uh, in the process of what it's referring to as a needs analysis. It's asking the community for its feedback on parks uh, in the town, open space, uh, as well as recreation activities. Uh, those individuals that are interested in completing that survey and providing us with that input uh, are invited to uh, find the link uh, to the online survey on the Recreation Department's uh, page on the town website. Well, uh, Mr. I think Chairman, is that, may I ask, is, is that the survey we discussed at our last meeting 
And that was going to be uh, the due date was sometime in mid January. Uh, yes, uh, I don't remember it was our last meeting, but yes, that is the that is the survey recently discussed by the town council. Okay, on that survey, yeah, I'm going to turn this over to two of my colleagues who took it. There's some major problems with that. I'd like you to hear them. So I, from that. okay, I remember it brought up last meeting when we approved it that it was asked uh, how can we verify the validity of it. It was asked that an email was going to be required to do the survey. Okay. So it was like one email per try. Uh, at no point was it asked for an email. You can take it as many times as you want, which raises a major concerns when a lot of the questions asked if the town wants, you know, how to spend the money and what to spend the money on. There's zero validity and zero traceability. Okay. And that was directly answered last meeting that it would have that how many times do you take the survey personally i tried it as many ways as i could to see if it was linked to my facebook this and that I'm you, you, in our conversation you said you completed three actual surveys uh and then i tried it again after on a different computer just to make sure my email wasn't attached to anything you know you can do it i could do it every single time and it asked at that very end it popped up on the top saying, thank you for completing the survey. Click here to do another one. Zero email attached or anything. Okay. So we have a problem. I want some resolution on that. In fact, we need some resolution on that. And my opinion at this point in time is that any results until now, we now have an answer basically null and void. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see where that survey would tell us anything. If a person can take it as many times as he wants, that's not the purpose of a survey. Sure. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, I was not aware of that. I'll, I'll find out what's going on. Thank you. Yeah. Further on, come on. Continue. Uh, just uh, two other items that I'll, I'll uh, reference for information's sake. Uh, the police department, uh, as you sort of gathered from the policy tonight, uh, is doing the, the second phase of, of camera work. Uh, the police vehicles, uh, road patrol vehicles, are getting uh, their new cameras, and so. Uh, when our officers are having interactions on the road, uh, they, those are being recorded uh, and stored uh, for uh, future use, not only for, uh, if you will, evidentiary purposes, but uh, can be used for training and those sorts of things. So that's going on. Um, so community, you need to start brushing your hair before you go out in case you're going to get stopped or look good on camera. Um, the last thing I'll mention is good news for the community as well. Uh, the senior center uh, was successful. Uh, some of you will recall that earlier in the year we submitted uh, the council approved submission of a grant uh, for funds to replace the uh, vehicle that the senior center uses for bus transportation uh, locally. Uh, that was approved. So uh, in the next several months, we'll be finished finalizing that grant and probably sometime in 22 or early 23, we might actually get a replacement bus uh, that uh, probably that will be a little bit bigger and a little bit more accommodating uh, for our seniors. And we can continue to try and implement the expanded uh, transportation programming that uh, I know the center, center, the senior center has been trying to implement for some time now. So uh, good news in that regard. Uh, otherwise, if there are other questions, I'll certainly take, uh, take them now. Uh, the report is on. Any questions for any colleagues? Do we have to uh, vote on that grant for the senior bus? Uh, no, with the action that the council took uh, to authorize the submission was sufficient uh, to allow us to go through to the fruition. And by the way, that's 100% uh, coverage, which is unheard of, but because of uh, various uh, supplemental programs that are going on, it's 100% coverage. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to appoint the following personnel to the following uh, commissions Marlene Geary and Jordan Higgins to Economic Development Commission, Nico Guerrero to Conservation Lake Commission Alternate, and Barbara Moore to the CT Office of Tourism. All right. Motion to second. Any discussion? Where's the CT Office of Tourism? It is something that's been flowing around for several years. It hasn't actually been staffed. Um, multiple people. How many 
David, how many representatives are there from different areas? To be honest with you, I don't know. Okay. There's one from each town and it's split into different parts of the state and they meet together and it's like uh, another way to attract tourism, this and that. It's uh, it's like what some of our committees are doing, but specifically reaching out to other parts of the state. This, this is more short as we'd be getting a report after the first meeting. So we fully understand what they're actually doing. Because I didn't know either. Right. So motion is second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Tax refunds. I would like to make a motion to accept the refund of $1,000, $89.87. Second. Any discussion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item 14, back to public remarks. Same as in remarks, please step forward to the mic, state your name and address. Hello, Pam Hatfield, 37 Friendly. Uh, again, I'd like to thank the council and the town manager for their consideration in accepting Friendly. A couple comments based on some of the information I heard here discussed. I just uh, think that to expect the residents, as I stated earlier, many senior citizens, longtime residents, a neighborhood of 14 homes, to bring the road up to pretty close to current subdivision standards at a price tag of a little bit greater than half a million dollars is unreasonable. I don't understand why Fern Lane is consistently singled out. Decisions have been made with other private roads, simply at the town council's acceptance. I, I really do not understand why there is a different set of rules for Fern Lane. Again, I would also remind you that decisions were made over a 40 year period to expand and develop on Fern Lane, two subdivisions, at that time, town was aware of the situation. That would have been the time to remedy it. They added to the issues, allowed the subdivisions and the developments knowing what was going on. I have maps di dictating for my lines and presence. And I really think that it would be um, extremely beneficial to the health, welfare, and safety of the residents for the council to please consider permanently resolving the situation. Again, I don't think that the residents want a major highway in the historic district. I think we just want the assurance to know when we need some patching, couple repair, we can call the town garage and they will respond. Thank you for your consideration. One other item, I have noted that private roads have been accepted. Um, seems like more affluent neighborhoods get their roads accepted. So again, I just wanna remind you to consider Fern Lane, the history of Fern Lane, all the contributions these residents have made to the town. We pay our taxes. We will pay to the water bill that was talked about earlier. We all have wells, we don't benefit. We pay the high school. We don't have, I'm sorry, we don't have kids in the high school. We pay for the town hall. We pay our taxes. We support our community. We volunteer. We are longtime residents. I just feel that it is the right thing to do. And I'm sorry if you don't all feel that same way. You should reconsider. Thank you. Grace Fishman, 13 Fern Lane. It was interesting to hear how the other two private roads 
um, became, uh, were accepted by the town because uh, sewers were put in and then when they repaved it, it was accepted. I didn't hear anything about <clears throat> looking at the drainage. I didn't hear anything about uh, surveying. I didn't hear anything about the kinds of issues that have been put forth uh, by uh, Mr. Cox. And therefore, I, I just don't understand why Fern Lane has to have so many other areas taken care of before it'll even be paved. Um, it has come to the point where when there are potholes, my husband has filled the potholes on the road. We have lived there for 40 years and we we're filling potholes. Um, Mr. Urbanowitz, who lives on the road, we see him out there filling potholes. Um, we have uh, an area where when you first come into the road, if there isn't enough room for two cars to pass to lane, you can pull over to the side. That was just dirt. And the Peregrinis had some work done at their house with paving. And they went and paved that section. That this is what it has come down to. And I cannot see why we would be liable, even if it was for a, a few years, you know, they'd have a term. But 14 of us with $550,000, how could we do that? I don't understand it. So I really would like to get to the bottom of this issue. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments for the public? Okay, hearing none. Uh, just to the residents of Fern Lane, one of the questions I was asking is because I don't know the answers. I don't know when these roads were accepted. And, and quite honestly, when High Point was accepted, and that's the thorn in my side because I was on planning and zoning, and I sat there and listened to the developer tell us how wonderful it was to the town because it's a private road, town's not going to spend a dime. Lo and behold, they got it approved. I was against that, but sadly, I was not in the council at that time to deny that was becoming a public road. That road, however, was built to town standards because of the age. Problem was when Fern Lane was put in, like White Birch, which would never meet any standards as today's going forward. The standard weren't round back in 1939, and when the town came in and did some patching and paving. I'm trying to get a more accurate history so I have a full understanding, and that's why I asked the questions I did. Um, and again, it's on the agenda next month, and we will be talking about it for We have some real numbers in front of us. So thank you for your time and patience. Any more public remarks? David, do we have anyone online? Kathy? No. Okay, this kind of like closed public remarks. We're at item 15. Communication. David, any more before us? Other than the uh, November summary. Which we all have in front of us. Okay, at this time I'd like to adjourn and go into executive session. Thank you all for coming. I hope we all have a happy holiday. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, you'll need to do a motion to uh, go into executive session. We have a motion to go into executive session. Come on. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. I know. 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 I know